we in our series Breakthrough this morning, continuing our series. And today, I want to talk to you about the sound of breakthrough. What does it sound like? Acts chapter 16 is our main text. We look at two men by the name of Paul and Silas. Acts chapter 16, verse 23 is where we're going to go today. You can go to your Bibles, open your smartphones, get your worship guide, open it up, look at it on the screen. It said, after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. And about midnight, that's late, that's dark. Some of you, you feel like it's late in your life. You feel like it's dark this morning in your life. You're watching online. You feel like it's dark in your marriage, like it's dark in your family. The Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them when, I love this word, suddenly. I don't know when he does it, but suddenly he'll do it. It may not be when I want it sometimes, but suddenly God shows up. I feel like I've been singing for a while, but suddenly God would do it. I feel like I've been praying for a minute, and I feel like I don't know if I can pray anymore. And then suddenly, I wish somebody would help me preach this morning. Suddenly, there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And once all the prison doors flew open, imagine the scene. And everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison's door, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. The sound of breakthrough. God, I thank you again today for your worship. God, your praise. Let us fill this place. God, your presence that is here today. God, those who are watching online, those that are North Judson at our East Campus, all across the country at God Pod, Westville, God, as we look at your word today, God, I pray that you would open our eyes, our ears, our minds, our hearts for what it is that you have to say to us today. Let us leave different than how we came in this place. Challenge and change every one of us. God, let them not just hear my voice, but God, let them hear your voice today. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Before you sit down, it may not make sense yet, but I need you to high five about four people and say, hey, adjust your sound. Come on, tell them. Adjust your sound. It don't make sense yet, but it will. Adjust your sound. Thank you, Pastor Austin. Thank you, worship team. Adjust your sound. Welcome again, those of you today. Welcome our guests, North Judson, East Campus. Good to see Chris. I met Chris before service. Paul brought him to church today. I love it when people bring guests to church, and they come and introduce them. It's good to see all of you today. The sound of breakthrough as we continue this series this morning. I want to talk to you about the sound of breakthrough. Psalm 89, 15, it says, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Not the critical sound, not the complaining sound, not the, the sound of regret. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound, for they shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. If you're not walking in that light, I would say maybe your sound is a little off. I, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but, but sounds can be very powerful things in your life. I don't know if you're like me. Like, I enjoy music, so maybe I pay a little bit more attention to sounds many times. But sounds uh, can be a, pair, a, variable, a very powerful thing in your life. I have it in your notes. Here's the first thing I know about sounds. Sounds can often be soothing. There's soothing sounds, right? Like, for example, this sound to some of you, might be a little soothing if you play it for me, Mr. Jeff. You hear that? Oh, that little baby. Little baby cooing. That's just, come on, one more time. That just sounds good, right? All the moms are just getting flutters in their stomach right now. Like, oh, the little baby. All the dads that have grown kids are like, thank God I don't hear that. That's not soothing. That's not soothing at all. Some sounds are, are, are soothing, right? Some, some sounds can cause things to come to a halt, can make you stop right where you're at. 
you hear this kind of sound, uh-huh, you hear that sound, you stop it. You better not run. You better not even try to do nothing crazy. You, some of y'all thought about running. Yeah, I saw one of you. You, tried, you. you thought about getting up right now because you didn't know what was going on. Some sounds can cause you to freeze, sounds you to stop. Some, some sounds can, can send you into a panic. If you've ever heard a sound like this, it can send you into a panic. You don't know what to do. Where should I go? What should I run to? Living down south during the, the, during the storm season, we heard this sound a lot, and it can be a terrifying sound. I give you those sound clips to maybe put it in your mind. What am I trying to say? I don't know if you realize this, but, but sounds are what can make or break an atmosphere. Can you help me this morning? Sounds, matter of fact, if, if we're just being honest, sounds can absolutely shift an atmosphere. You don't believe me? Pay attention next time you're at a restaurant, you're out to eat, you're sitting down, you're hanging out, you're enjoying talking with your friends, right, hanging out, and just watch what happens in the atmosphere when a, a baby or a kid out of nowhere starts screaming in that restaurant. Watch the atmosphere shift, right? Some people are like, oh, we should help her. The dads are like, somebody shut the kid up. You know, like it happens, the, the whole atmosphere just shifts. Or you're sitting there, watch what happens if you've ever, if you've ever, if you've ever been in a restaurant and... And the waitress is walking or the busboy is walking, and you hear that sound of the tub falling and broken glass. And everybody stops like, uh-huh, somebody getting fired. Somebody is getting fired right now. Sounds can shift an atmosphere. I, I, I remember one sound. You know, sounds can even, even wake you up out of a dead sleep. I don't know if you've ever been sleeping and you maybe you thought you heard something in your house. And you can be, you can be like in the deepest sleep possible, but a certain sound will wake you right up. It will cause you to sit right up in your bed, right? For me, uh, I, I remember about a year ago, we were going to Disney World. It's our big family vacation. And, and right before vacation, like, I don't know what happens, but every time right before vacation, someone in my family gets sick. It's just, it just happens. I don't know why. And uh, Mason ended up getting sick, and he was throwing up and doing some things. And I'm like, listen, man, we paid for this trip. You're going to have to get on this plane regardless, you know. I'm not a compassionate dad. I'm just being honest. And, uh, you know, my wife's like, well, what should we drive down? I'm like, I'm not driving to Florida. We fly into Florida. And, and my son, Mason, he ends up feeling better, and he's a champ. And he goes, I can do it, Dad. I can get on the plane. And so we get on the plane, and we fly to Florida, and we, we land late in Orlando that night. And it's about 1 o'clock. We get to, the, get to the condo that we're going to be in, and we're there. We're settled, and Mason's feeling better. I'm like, oh, we're here. It's going to be a good vacation. And I just pass out on the bed, right? And we're in this nice bedroom, huge bed, white carpet on the floor, luscious carpet thick, and I'm laying there, and all of a sudden, I hear this sound of something wet and chunky hitting the floor. Mm-hmm, y'all know, and I flew up out of my bed like an instant, yelling, what are you doing, as if it's his fault, and it wasn't my son Mason, but my other son Jeremiah, it was now sick, and I was now awake panicking for the rest of the night because sounds can shift in atmosphere. You say, what in the world does this have to do with me, Pastor Matt? We're talking about breakthrough and talking about the sounds of all of this stuff. You know, many of us are looking and searching for breakthrough in our, our life. And I would submit to you this morning that, that maybe your breakthrough is not going to come by what you see or what you do not see. But maybe your breakthrough is going to come by the sound you are making. M many of us think that our problems, watch this. Are, are the things in life that have us bound and that things in life that have us tangled up and the thing in life that have us in bondage and we feel so tied down and bound down. But maybe the problems in life are not the things that have us bound, but our inability to make the right sounds because sounds have power. You know, I look in my text and I, I look in the Bible and it, and it tells me that God inhabits the praises of his people, not the complaints of his people. Come on, can you help me this morning? Don't look at me like you're more saved and you don't struggle with this. We, we, we come to God many times. We think if we can complain enough or if we can groan enough or if we can moan enough or if we can talk about our problems enough that God is going to come to our rescue. But when I look at my word, that when my praises go up, that's when his presence comes down in my life. When I begin to declare his magnitude, when I begin to declare his greatness, even though I might see some things that don't look favorable, but when my eyes get lifted up to him and my praise goes up to him, that's when things begin to change in my life. You don't believe me, go ask the nation of Israel how their complaining worked out for them. The promised land that was promised to them 
the things that they were supposed to inhabit, the things that they were supposed to possess, the breakthrough that was supposed to come in their life, it got postponed and a whole generation missed out because of their sound, the sound of complaining. You know, it's a time we find ourselves in trouble where we don't have the proper sound going on. I would submit to you that now maybe you and I as a Christ follower, listen, we have a lot to praise God about. I know we might be facing some situations and circumstances that, that don't look good. I know at North Judson and East you came in today and you have some problems going on. That's okay. But, but what would happen if we begin to use our, our, our words not to describe our situation but begin to declare our situation? Well, what would it look like if you and I begin to use, you, you don't believe me, it's in the Bible, it's biblical. Proverbs 18, 21, it says the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. See, see, you and I, we have an issue in our life that we have our sound a little off. Uh, and today I want to talk to you about the sound of breakthrough. Y'all looking at me like I'm all crazy, so I need to get to my main text. I'm going to tell you right now, the first service preached me down, so you better help me out this morning. We find our text again. We go to verse 23. It says, after they had been severely flogged, it's talking about Paul and Silas. They were thrown into prison. And the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Can I talk to you for a few minutes about the opposition of the sound? The opposition of the sound in your life. If I can give you some context of what's going on here in Paul and Silas's life. They have entered into this city. They've been doing ministry in this city. They've been preaching the gospel in this city. And there's a certain young lady, if you go and read the text beforehand, there's a certain young lady who the Bible tells us is, is possessed by demons. And because of these demonic spirits in her life, she can, she can fortune tell and she can predict the future and she can tell things that are going to happen and so she has some people who has made her a slave she's they are her owners and, and they're they're making money off of this lady's situation they're making money off of the very thing that has her in bondage they're finding enjoyment and fulfillment off of the thing that has her tied down see don't get it twisted the enemy loves to watch you stay in bondage he gets enjoyment out of it <clears throat> he gets pleasure out of watching you and Paul and Silas, she's there, and, and, they, and she begins to yell at them, and these are the men of God, and they're preaching the truth. And, and Paul and Silas are like, yo, man, we ain't got time for this. And, and she calls in a ruckus, and, and they look at this young lady, and they cast the demons out of her. And you would think everyone in the community was like, hey, she's set free. That's amazing. But, but they get upset at Paul and Silas. And matter of fact, her master's like, well, how are we going to make money now? She's not demon-possessed anymore. So they take Paul and Silas, and they take them, and they basically throw them in front of the councilmen of the city, and they say, yo, what are we going to do with them? We should punish these guys. And the Bible tells us that they get severely flogged, get severely beaten, and then, as if that's not bad enough, they get thrown in jail. As if being beaten and flogged is not bad enough. They're like, yeah, while we're at it, let's throw them in jail. And, and if you study it out, you know, I used to think, like, oh, they probably like, got a cane or like something and, and whooped Paul and Silas. But, but if you study out history, really what happened, what they beat Paul and Silas with was about the size and the thickness of a two-by-four today. And so they would beat them many times so bad that it was their intention to actually break their tailbone while they beat them. Why would they break their tailbone? Well, very simple. When they would then take them to jail as, as, it, as it would continue to torture the chains and the shackles that they put in their feet was designed in such a way that their feet would be spread out so then that the tailbone that was broken would then be stretched and then it caused even more pain. The opposition of the sound. So here's Paul and Silas. They've been beaten. They've been thrown into jail, into the innermost jail. And it's not really a dungeon like some of us think, but it's the innermost jail cell. It's a cell that is surrounded by a lot more cells. And so it's very heavily, very heavily guarded. And, and here's Paul and Silas. They're in the deepest, darkest place of their life. We try to say, have you ever realized that the moment the moment you're on the verge of breakthrough, or I can even say it like this, that even right after God has done something amazing in your life, that that's the moment you'll be under the greatest attack of your life. Come on, can you help me this morning? My pastor said it last week. You know, we've been talking about this, this breakthrough, and, and, and we say, you know, another level brings another devil. Okay, about five of you was paying attention last week. That's good. Another level brings another 
devil, right? And, and he talked about last week the treadmill, that the enemy is the manufacturer of the treadmill. And the enemy many times will produce things, you know, that, that will cause you to find yourself being in opposition. And, 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 I, and I often thought of that. Why is that? The enemy is not stupid. The enemy is not dumb. He knows what power is in your praise. So what the enemy will do, he will use life, he will use situations, and he'll put you at what you feel like being the deepest and the darkest place in your life. He'll put you through torture. He'll put you through torment. Why? Because he's trying to stop the sound in your life. He's trying to keep you from the praise in your life. He's trying to oppose everything that God has for you and oppose everything that God wants to do you. But if you'll just get your eyes, oh, I wish somebody would help me this morning. Y'all ain't ready this morning. The opposition of the sound. See, maybe the enemy is trying to discourage you for a reason. So don't get down on yourself. Don't start saying, poor little me. The the reason the enemy is after you is because you got something in you he's trying to stop. And can I just tell you, if he's not after you, you probably ain't got nothing in you that he's trying to stop. So you might want to look again. But if he's coming after your life, there's something inside of you that he's trying to go after. Because he knows there's power in your praise. And what I love about Paul and Silas, watch this, their their expressions, listen, they're in jail. They've been beaten, their tailbone is broke. They're even being tortured as, as, as they're in jail. Their expressions came, watch this, not from their circumstances, but from who Christ is. I can imagine Paul and Silas, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me. I just got beat, but you, God, you're giving me a table before me in the presence of enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. I could preach the whole 23rd Psalm if you'll help me. My cup runneth over. Surely and goodness will follow me. It don't feel like it is right now, but good, goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. But the opposition. So if you find yourselves going through some things, going through some things, don't look now. Be encouraged because maybe the enemy is trying to keep what's in you from coming out. The opposition of the sound. Can we go on then in verse 25? Talking about the sound of breakthrough. Verse 25, it says, and about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners, underline that for me, were listening to them. The other prisoners were, listen, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. I don't really know. The Bible doesn't tell us. I don't know what Paul and Silas were singing. Maybe they were singing, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, right? Light in the darkness. Maybe they were singing that. I don't know. I would like to think Paul and Silas had a little bit more gospel in them. And maybe they were singing something like this. I love this song. The presence of the Lord is here. Y'all ain't feeling that one either. The presence of the Lord is here in the middle of a jail. I can feel it in the atmosphere. All right, I'm going to keep preaching. Y'all ain't feeling that. Maybe. Can I talk to you now about the motivation of the sound? The motivation. We got the opposition that Paul and Silas face, that you and I face, but, but now there's the motivation. What motivated Paul and Silas? You know, if you look at other translations, the other scriptures, it's, you know, our, our version to say, it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. Some versions say about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and praising hymns to God. And, and I know what you're thinking right now, and you're like, Pastor Matt, I mean, I'm not a very emotional person, and... I, I, don't, I don't really get very excited. I'm not very, uh, uh, I, I'm not very animated when it, when it comes to things. And you're talking about praise and, and my sound. And, and, man, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you realize this or not, but every one of you are praising something in your life. Oh, oh you're praising something. It may not be on a Sunday morning when we're singing, I plead the blood. But, but you're singing something on Monday. Matter of fact, the word praise, you know what it means? The word praise means to uh, commend to applaud or magnify. What are you magnifying in your life today? Come on, North Justin. What are you magnifying in your life? What is it that you are praising? What is it that you are applauding? Because believe it or not, watch yourself, you're praising something. You give me about two minutes on your social media, I can tell exactly what you're praising. 
Don't get quiet on me. You give me about five minutes of conversation, I can tell exactly what you're praising. I can tell if you're praising your circumstances. I can tell if you're praising all the negativity around you. I can tell if you're praising all of the stuff that's going on. That is real. That is life. That is happening. But something was different about Paul and Silas. That even though while they were in the jail, even though that while they had been beaten, even though while they were in pain, even though while they found themselves in shackles, they began to praise. And I begin, they understood that when they begin to praise and when they begin to sing praises to God, they were starting to command what God had already said over their circumstances. I can imagine maybe Paul just speaking up and saying, yo, I, I got a song on my heart. And he says something like, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually. I know I'm in a jail right now, but I'm going to bless the Lord anyways. I know I'm in pain right now, but I'm going to bless the Lord anyways. I know my kids are acting crazy right now, but I'm going to bless the Lord anyways. My marriage is facing some stuff. But I'm going to bless the Lord anyways. I can imagine Silas saying, I will lift my eyes up to the mountains. I don't even see mountains because I'm in a jail. I can't even see the mountains because I'm in a dark place. I wish somebody would help me. I will lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. It comes from the maker of heaven and earth. I can imagine the motivation they had for their sound. See, see what you've got to understand is there is no time. And there is no place where praise is not unacceptable to God because he's always worthy of it. There's no time. Can, can I say it to you like this? Because y'all still ain't getting this this morning. Maybe, maybe you'll get this. It, it's easy to see a breakthrough and then sing about it. But can you sing about the breakthrough before you ever see it? That's real praise. You don't, you don't believe me? Go ask Joshua in the walls. Of Jericho. When God said, listen, I want you to march around the walls. And I want you to give a shout out. And then when you give a shout out, then the walls are going to come down. Why would God do that? Why, why can't the walls come down and then I give him praise? I think because God understands that sometimes we need to shift our focus. Sometimes our motivation needs to be turned around. And it needs to be taken off of our circumstances. It needs to be taken off of our life. It needs to be taken off all of the trials and the tribulations. And we lift our eyes to the hills. We lift our eyes to the maker. We put our eyes back on Christ, who is the author, who is the finisher of our faith. He didn't start us in this thing just to leave us here. He didn't bring us here just to leave us out to dry. But he started us here and he's going to see us all the way through. Can you sing it before you ever see it? That's the motivation. You know, a lot of times we're waiting for that right moment and then we're going to praise God. We're waiting for that light, big monumental moment and then, well, then I'm going to praise God. But, but, but can, can you sing it before you ever see it? Can I give you another one? This is free. I won't even charge you for this one today. But you know David. You go read about David. David was famous. Watch this. David, David was famous. He was known way before he was ever known for the giants that he was slaying. You know what he was known for? For the sounds he was making. Go read the story. You know what got him a seat in front of King Saul? It wasn't he had killed Goliath yet. It hadn't even happened yet. It was the mere fact that he knew how to play a harp and sing songs. That's what got him in the presence of a king. It wasn't the mere fact that he had won some amazing battles, but it was the mere fact that David under, understood the, 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 the importance and the need for a sound. So King Saul had these, these spirits that would torment him, and he would summon for David. And David would come in, not a sword, not, not a stone, not a slingshot. He would roll in with a harp. That's the most unmanliest instrument I've ever heard of in my life, a harp. This dude would roll in with a harp and begin to sing. And what would happen as his sound went forth, Saul's, Saul's spirits would begin to leave and his trouble would begin to go on. Why? Not because the trouble was necessarily not there, but because the presence of God would fall. Jesus Christ would be magnified. And David was there. See, some of you wonder, can I just give you some life advice? Some of you wonder why you're not getting that promotion yet. You've been wanting for it work. You're like, well, I work hard. And they're always giving it to other people. Maybe it's because they want to promote somebody that actually loves the company because your sound's a little off. They want to promote someone that's not complaining and not criticizing and, and, and not complaining. Oh, I don't even make enough money around here. I need, to, I need to be more making more money. Maybe you'll get promoted once you learn to adjust your sound. Can you sing it before you see it? I, see, I, I, I sing things over my kids that I'll be honest, sometimes I don't see. It's hard for me to see 
my kids as a man of God, even though I sing it for them, which my oldest son now, who's about to be a, a sixth grader, and I now understand it, that even as a 37-year-old man, while my dad looks at me some way, sometimes the way he does is because my son is a lot like me. I just simp- he just simply does not know how to shut his mouth when he needs to shut his mouth. I still do it. Pray for me. But even though I don't see it in his life, I still sing it over him. I still declare things over him. Sometimes I don't see the things in my finances happening like I want to. doesn't mean I don't stop singing it. Sometimes I don't see the things happening in my marriage like I want to, but doesn't mean I don't stop singing it. Sometimes I don't see what I would like to see in my community or in my nation or, or in my church, in our youth group, whatever it may be. doesn't mean I don't stop singing it. Can you sing it before you see it? What is the motivation of your sound? Because in the middle of their punishment, watch this, Paul and Silas knew how to praise in the moment of despair, with everything stacked up against them, when they had every, if anybody had an excuse to complain and moan and groan, this would be two individuals I would give a pass to. Instead of shaking their fist at God, they threw their hands up and surrender. See, too often we're waiting on things to change in order for us to have something to praise God about when in all reality he's worthy of our praise no matter what we're facing. I said he's worthy of our praise no matter what we're facing. He's worthy of our praise no matter what our circumstances look like. He's worthy of our praise no matter what the situation around us looks like because he is still on the throne. He is still in control. He still got my back. He knows exactly where I'm going. He hasn't left me here. The motivation of the sound. And then we move on in verse 26 and we see... Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. We see the opposition. We see the motivation. Now can I talk to you about the revelation of the sound? Watch this. Because of the sound Paul and Silas was making. Because of the sound that they were willing to lift up in that jail cell. Watch what happens. God's power power was revealed and made known to everyone around them that day. Because of the sound. Not because of circumstances. They didn't even have a band with them. They didn't even have a good worship pastor with them. It was just Paul and Silas in a jail. But but they were willing. They were motivated. They, They understood who Christ was in their life. And because of the sound that was lifted up, God's power falls. His power is revealed. The Bible says the very prison is shaken. And watch this. Everybody gets set free. Everybody's chains falls off. Everybody's doors uh, comes flying wide open. Can I submit something to you this morning? Just think about it. It may not be for you. It might be for the person next to you. But could it be said that maybe in the American church, God's power is not being revealed because our sound is off? Because listen, don't look now. I look all across this world and I see God's power being made known. I look all across this world and I see thousands of people getting saved, thousands of people getting healed, thousands of people getting baptized, thousands of miracles. And listen, the same God, far as I know, and I believe that the Bible says the same God that is a God in Haiti, the same God that is a God in China, the same God that is a God in Iran is the same God in America. It's the same God in Valparaiso. He's the same God in North Judson. He's the same God at the East Campus, at the Westfield Campus, in the God Pod, the same God... That when our sound goes up, well, what I love about the power that fell, watch this too. It wasn't a power of destruction. It was a power of deliverance. How does an earthquake happen? I've never been in an earthquake. Hope I never will be. But how does an earthquake happen so strong? The Bible says it shakes the very foundations of the prison. And the only thing that happened is the doors fall fly open and the chains fall nothing else happens the roof don't cave in or nothing it it, it was a sound it was God's power of destruction not of deliverance 
And, and can I just say this too? Maybe it's for us. I'm talking about the revelation of the sounds. Maybe for some of us today, maybe you're watching online. Some of us are giving God a bad rap because our sound is producing things that's not of him. We have a sound going forth that seems like he's more of a God of a destruction instead of a God of deliverance. A sound going forth, and we wonder why nobody around us wants anything we have to offer. Maybe it's our sound is a little off. The revelation of the sound. What I love, when, when everybody breaks loose and watch this, nobody moves. Get that picture in your mind. Imagine for a minute, let's just say something happened today at Porter County Jail and somehow all the, j all the jail doors busted open. I'm going to tell you right now, nobody would just be staying there. I'm just going to say it right now. Nobody would be sitting there. I'm telling you, right? You'd be seeing jokers running all up down 49. That's what would be happening, right? It would, and I don't blame them. But, but watch this. The, the, at once, all the prison doors flew open. Watch this, and everyone's Chains came loose, but nobody moved. Because watch, verse 29. Come on, Pastor Austin. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He's scared. Because in the Bible days, the jailer who was over those people who was in prison, if anything happened to the prisoners, many times the jailer received the punishment that the prisoners were supposed to receive. So a lot of people were in there, had some capital punishment. Many historians believe that Paul and Silas, the reason they were beaten and then thrown in the jail is because the next day they were planning most likely to kill on them, to kill all of them. So, 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 so this jailer is terrified for his life. He, he's about to fall on his sword, but he, but he falls in. He rushes in. Paul and Silas are like, hey, don't do it, man. We all here. Nobody's moved. So in verse 30, he then brought them out. The jailer, is, that is, he's talking to Paul and Silas. He says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. We could stop about the revelation of the sound. We could stop right there today, and that would be good. About how the chains came, fell off, the prison doors flew open. Paul and Silas was about to face capital punishment, most likely, but they're set free. We read in the rest of the text that the jailer takes Paul and Silas to his house, begins to wash their, their wounds. We can stop at the revelation of the sound and shout and have an altar time, but can I talk to you now and just end today about the multiplication of the sound? I ask myself, why did everyone stay? Why did no one leave that jail cell that day? Several years ago, a very long time ago, when I was being rebellious and running from God, I had a short little stint in jail. Nothing crazy, nothing major. Don't look at me like you're more saved than me. You ain't never done it wrong. But I was in jail just for a minute. I told the first service, it wasn't a big deal. I barely stabbed the dude when I did. And it was, I'm joking. I didn't stab nobody. I'm joking. It's a joke. Now when I tell you what I really did one day, you'll be like, oh, he didn't stab nobody. No big deal, right? Now I found myself just in a short little stint. I found myself very miserable very fast. You ever realize God sometimes lets you get what you thought you wanted just to show you that what you wanted you didn't really want? That's a whole other sermon for another time. And I remember, listen, if something would have happened while I was there for just a short stint, if something would have happened and the jail cell would have flew open, I'd have been gone so quick. Bro, I would have been running, so I don't even run, and I would have ran fast. But why did these people stay? And I begin to ask the question, and, and I, think, I think the reason they stayed is they heard something that they wanted more of. Watch this. They heard something that sounded enticing. Here are two guys that have every right to be mad. Here are two guys that have every right to be angry. Who are two, here are two guys that have every right to have unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment and just all crazy nastiness stuff in their life. But, but something was different about these two men. And I wonder what would happen. Can I tell you, as Christ followers, we should be the most joyful sounding people around. I know it's tough. I know we face some situations. I know we may face some circumstances. But, but what would happen if our sound began to be multiplied? And what would happen if people around us heard? 
the jailer was about to kill himself. He's about to take his own life. And Paul and Silas interrupt him like, no, man, we're all here. See, you, you know, the, the thing in this story, I, I, I look at this. Thank God for breakthrough in my life. But if we just stopped at the revelation and we didn't move on to the multiplication of the sound, we would miss something. Because, see, most of us get a breakthrough and we just use it for ourselves. Come on, hear me this morning, church. North Judson, East Campus. Many of us, our problem in our life is that God comes and he does something in our own life. But notice, even Paul and Silas, they didn't leave. They didn't run. They, they didn't go anywhere. They stayed right there in the jail cell. Why? Because they understood what had happened was not just for them. It was about to be for some other people around them. The story is kind of like if you go read Acts chapter 5 and Acts chapter 12. See, at this time, it wasn't nothing new for Christians to be put in jail and be persecuted and be beaten and do all of that stuff. And in Acts chapter 5 and Acts chapter 12, there was some people in jail. And, and in those two instances, an angel came and, and got them out of jail, basically busted them out. And they got out of town before it got crazy. But in this instance, the power of God fell. And, and not only in Paul and Silas's life, watch this, generations are now about to be changed. Because the, the jailer, go to your text, he takes them home. Go read in the story when you get home this afternoon. He washes their wounds. The Bible says that Paul and Silas begin to preach to the whole house. The jailer's cousins heard about the gospel of Jesus. The, ga the jailer's wife heard about the gospel of Jesus. The jailer's kids heard about the gospel of Jesus. I don't know, he might have had grandkids. They heard about the gospel of Jesus. The sound that was revealed now began to get multiplied. And now generations was about to get changed. And you know what I love about this story? I, I forgot to tell this to the first service, but, but this guy's name, we don't even know his name in this story, but we know his name when you get later on in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Paul writes about this guy and his name, I'm going to try to get it right, his name was St Stephanus, was the jailer's name. And Paul writes about him in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And it was Stephanus and his family members and his household that became the first converts to Jesus Christ in Acacia. What are you trying to say? What the enemy, watch this, what the enemy meant to be, meant to be used for, for punishment in Paul and Silas' life turned into a church plant right there in Acacia. What the enemy meant to be to, to, to keep the gospel from, from going forth. The, the power of God fell and the gospel not just came forth. It was multiplied into a family. It was multiplied into generations. It was the first people that heard about the gospel. The church started right there in the living room. What are you trying to say is maybe there's a sound that God is stirring in our life that yes, he's here to break through. Yes, he's here to come through in our life but it's not just for you and I so we can run out these doors and keep it to ourselves but there's people in our community. There's people in your family. There's people in your, on your campuses. There's people on the jobs that you go to that they're waiting for the sound. Their chains are on their life and the chains are not going to fall until the sound of your life gets multiplied. Until the sound of what God is doing in your life gets multiplied. That they are waiting on you and I. Pastor Matt, I don't, I don't say too much. I mean, me, me and this Jesus thing, it's just, it's kind of between me and God. It's, just, it's kind of between me and him. I mean, what he does for me, I, I just like to keep it to myself. How foolish and even how selfish when there are people around us wanting to be delivered. Why did we go to North Judson five years ago and plant a campus? Because there was a community that needed a sound to be changed. Listen, you drive in North Judson now five years later, the sound is totally different in that community. The sound looks totally different in that community. You walk on North Judson High School, as Pastor James has been there every week doing character and leadership stuff, the sound is totally different. The student body, the sound is changing. Why do we plan a campus east? Why can't they just come to Valpo? It's just right down the road. Because there's a community that a sound needs to be multiplied in. There's a school this fall. There's a sound that's going to be multiplied. There's lives that need to be challenged. There's lives that need to be changed. Why do we go to Westfield? Because we're multiplying a sound. Why do we go to the God pod. I wish you would help me because we're multiplying the sound. Why do we preach to you every week to go to your campus, to go to your community, to go to your family because there's a multiplication of a sound of God who's not just wanting to resonate over your life. He's wanting to resonate over your community. He's wanting to resonate over your life. If you'll just take it and go with it, 
God, multiply the sound in my life. Give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Stand to your feet this morning. Pastor James and Pastor Wally, you're going to come in a minute. Pastor Phil mentioned it earlier. Today's Pentecost Sunday. The day that the Holy Spirit came, the, the comforter was delivered just as Jesus promised. And in Acts chapter 2, you go read it. Go read it today. Acts chapter 2, verse 2, it says that they're standing there. They're in this room. They've been praising. They've been singing. They're all in one accord. The unity is there. And the Bible says, and suddenly, if you know it, there came a, come on. Suddenly there came a, suddenly there came a sound. And watch this. The sound wasn't just for the people in the room. What was it? The sound was to mobilize the church. It would be after that sound that Peter would stand up and thousands would get saved. See, I, I wonder who in your life is waiting. They're waiting for your sound. Come on, as you stand, I want you to bow your heads. Close your eyes. Pastor Wally, Pastor James is coming up at our campuses. And as you stand there this morning, I, I got two questions for you. It's just simple. Maybe you're here today, you come in, and you're, you're facing some situations. You're facing some circumstances. You're watching online at our campuses, and no doubt in my mind that you're going through some stuff, but, but you've come in here and your sound has been complaining, your sound has been criticizing, your sound is, has just been moaning and groaning. Listen, I've come to challenge you today and say, you know what, you need to adjust your sound. 